Good morning, everyone. Praise God. How's everybody doing today? Hopefully well. I'm doing good and uh, had a great time last night. I think everyone had a great time. Uh, we had a, a good turnout, a good group for our Q&A. And that really has been so much fun, that question and answer time that we've been doing every Wednesday night. So if you missed it, I would encourage you to go back and, and look at that. And to join us next Wednesday at 7, as we'll do the same thing, praise God. But for now, we're glad to be here as we are talking about the love that we're to have for one another in the body of Christ. That's what we've been talking about this week in these videos. That's a very important topic, obviously. It's foundational to everything. It really is the height of Christian maturity, as we'll see more tomorrow, Lord willing. But we need to love one another. We can cannot let anything get in the way of that. And so we thank God for that. We ask God that he will help us to, to love each other more. And that he will help us to grow in this love, to grow in his word, to grow in his grace. And we certainly thank him for that. Well, today we're going to look at Philippians chapter 2. A, a tremendous, tremendous passage about love and the love that we must have for one another. And it really brings together different things we've talked about these past few days already. And so it's a tremendous, tremendous portion of scripture. We're going to start in verse one. So this is Philippians chapter two, beginning in verse one. Here's what we read. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies. Let me just stop right there. This if is really a because. Because there is consolation in Christ. Because we have the comfort of God's love. These are things that are true. We have salvation in Jesus Christ. Our sins have been forgiven. We have been redeemed. We have consolation in Christ. We have the comfort of God's love. We don't know it fully. We can't comprehend it. But God loves us more than we can even imagine. And we have that love to cling to. We have the fellowship of the Spirit, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. We're indwelt by the Holy Spirit. We've received the tender mercies of God. So really, when Paul says if, he's not saying if this is true. He's saying because this is true. And that's just a literary technique that writers use. And so because of all of this, look at verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. That's all stuff that we've talked about this week. So Paul says, because you have received this great love from God, because you have received this incredible salvation, because we have eternal life, our sins are forgiven, and we're on our way to heaven. Because of all that, this is what you need to do. Fulfill my joy. So he says, this will make me so happy. And I talked about that yesterday as a pastor. Nothing makes me happier than to see the body of Christ loving one another, getting along, unified. I love to see that. Paul loved to see that. So he said, fulfill my joy, that ye be like-minded. We talked about that. We're called to have the same mind, the same spirit, the Holy Spirit, the mind of Christ that we have from the word of God, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, as we talked about yesterday. And so may we have that mind, may we be like-minded, having the same love, he says, not to love hypocritically, as we talked about from Romans 12 the day before. We're to love all the brethren the same. Not love this one more, this one less, because I like this person more. This person's better looking. This person can help me more. This person has more money, whatever the case is. No, no, no. Have the same love. Have the same love for all the body of Christ. We may like certain parts more than others, right, if we're honest with ourselves. But I hope we love the brethren. I hope we have the same love. I hope our love is without hypocrisy, as Paul said back in Romans 12. So be like-minded, have the same love, be of one accord and of one mind. Again, the unity that we're to have. And this one mind must be the mind of Christ. It must come from his word. It must be the result of our salvation. 
If not, we won't be of the same mind. And we understand that none of us are identical in how we think or what we believe in, in different ways, but we're called by the grace of God to, to base our beliefs on the scripture. And what we say, and what we do, and what we believe, and what we feel even should be based on the Bible. And if we do that, there will be unity. And even when we do have disagreements, we don't let it end the unity. We don't let it cause division. We continue to love. We continue to have one mind, be of one accord. Then he says this in verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. So don't do anything that could cause strife. Don't do anything that could cause division. Don't do anything to bring vain glory to ourselves. We all struggle with this at times. Sometimes we want to say something to bring a little glory to ourselves. And we've all done that. We need God's grace. We want to do something. Whatever the case is, don't do that. Paul says, don't let, let nothing, absolutely nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Let nothing be done that could cause division. Let nothing be done for our own glory, but for God's glory. And then he says this, but in lowliness of mind. So rather than seeking vain personal glory, be humble. In lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. So we are called today, really we are commanded today by God. And we can only do this by his grace. We're commanded today by the word of God to esteem others greater than ourselves, to esteem others better than ourselves, to care about the needs of others. Sometimes we get tunnel vision in this life. We're so focused on our needs and what's going on in our life. And we may have some great needs and we may have some, some big things going on in our lives, good or bad. But through that, we're called to focus on others. We're called to pray for others. Sometimes, and I know I'm guilty of this, we get a little selfish even in our prayers. And it's good to pray for ourselves, don't get me wrong, but we should pray for others a lot. And I've found that when I pray for others more, it helps me more than if I just spend all the time praying for myself. So pray for others. Think about what others are going through. Look to encourage others, especially if someone else is dealing with the same thing you are. What a great opportunity to minister, to help, to serve in that way. So let each esteem others better than themselves. Care about others. Think about others. Be willing to take a back seat and let someone else have the spotlight in some way. Whatever that may be, only God knows. And, and you in, in, the, in the moment may know. But again, let us do this. Be esteem others better than themselves verse four look not every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others so again like verse three said focus on others how can i serve my neighbor today how can i serve my brother or my sister today how can i pray for them today how can i love them today and that's what love is it's service it's sacrifice it's selflessness it's putting someone else's needs ahead of your own that's what love is. So how can I do that? How can I look on someone else today, especially my brothers and sisters in Christ? As we've been saying all week, we're called to love all people, but we're called to have a special love, a greater love for God's people, just as God has a greater love for his own people, praise God. And so how can I love the people of God more? How can I look on the things of others? How can I esteem others? instead of myself? How can I be more focused on others instead of myself? And then if we need any help, any reminder, any motivation, any inspiration to do this, look at verse five. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And if we were to go on, we would see what Jesus did, how he humbled himself, how he left heaven, how he came to this earth, how he lived as a man and died as a sinner though he was perfect, dying for us, the worst kind of death. He did this in humility and he did this in love. He certainly was putting others ahead of himself when he did this. He certainly was focused on the things of others. He certainly was esteeming others better than himself when he did this, though none are greater than our Lord Jesus, of course. So in our Lord Jesus Christ, we have not only the Savior of the world, the Savior of all who will repent of their sin, 
but we have the greatest example and reminder of love and humility there is. And so if we are getting tunnel vision, if we are too focused on ourselves, let's think about Jesus. Let's think about what he did and let that motivate us then to serve and to love others. So an incredible little passage here this morning, an incredible reminder to love one another. We have received salvation. We have received comfort and consolation and forgiveness and mercy and love and all these incredible things from God. We now need to give these to others. Be humble before each other. Be merciful to each other. Be patient to each other. Be loving towards each other in the body of Christ. We absolutely need to do this more and more. And Jesus is our ultimate example in all of it. So let that be a challenge to us today. I know it's a challenge to me, and I pray it's a challenge to every one of us. And I pray that God will give us grace to meet this challenge, to truly love one another as he has loved us. And so praise God for that. Again, thank you for joining us this morning. I encourage you to share this with others. I encourage you to keep going in the faith, keep going in grace, and keep going in love, loving the brethren, esteeming others better than yourself. And so praise God for that. I hope everyone has a wonderful day now today. And Lord willing, we look forward to seeing everyone again tomorrow at 10. And so until then, stay in God's word, keep the faith, and keep going in love. Have a great day and God bless.